In this section, I'm going to be talking about the derivative as a function. So let's first talk about the idea of the derivative function. The derivative of f of x is a new function, f prime of x, that gives the slope of the function f of x at x. And as we've seen before, besides giving the slope of a function, the derivative can also tell us the instantaneous rate of change of y with respect to x at some particular value x. So while before we've looked at um, the derivative at a particular point, now we're looking at um, the derivative as a function so that we can find, for instance, the slope of the function at any value x instead of at just some particular value a. So let's just take a look at this first example here. Let's say we have f of x is 2x plus 1, and we want to use this idea of the derivative as the slope function to find f prime of x. So if I have my graph of 2x plus 1, this is going to cross here at 1, up to and over 1. So we have something like this. So using what I know about um, the derivative as slope, um, f prime of x should be equal to the slope of this line at each x. So I can see that f prime of x should be 2, just using the fact that the derivative should tell me the slope at each particular point. But of course, most of our functions don't have a constant slope. And as a point moves along some curve, so this curve below, but if I have some curve like this here, as a point moves along this curve, the slope of the tangent line to the curve is going to change. Sometimes that slope is going to be positive, sometimes it's going to be negative, sometimes it's even going to be zero. So we're going to need to have our function f prime of x depend on x. Okay. So here's our definition. So this definition is just extending um, that definition of the derivative at a point to now a derivative at any value x. So the derivative of f is the function f prime of x where f prime of x is equal to this limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h as long as that limit exists. Okay, so we see that um, the definition of a derivative is an exact application of these limits. Um, and when we compute something using the definition of the derivative, we're going to have to compute a limit and use limit techniques. And then we're going to be able to say that the derivative exists if this limit exists. Namely, if the limit is the same from the left and the right and is equal to some number from both of those directions. So we call a function differentiable if that limit exists, if the derivative at a exists. And we can also talk about a function being differentiable on open intervals if it's differentiable at every number in that interval. Okay. We also have um, a few different ways to notate um, this process of taking the derivative. So if I want to take the derivative of a function y equals f of x with respect to x, I can say I'm going to find f prime of x y prime of x. I might also say dy dx is the derivative of y with respect to x. I could say df dx, the derivative of f with respect to x. I could say d dx of f of x. Or we might have these um, last two here, which you don't see as frequently, but these are also notations for taking the derivative. We have d capital D of f of x, meaning take the derivative of f of x, and capital D subscript x of f of x, meaning take the derivative of f of x with respect to x. Note that this d dx is called a differentiation operator. So we apply d dx to things. I take d dx of f or d dx of y. Okay. So what we want to do um, in our example is just see how we can use this limit definition of the derivative to compute the derivative of a particular function. Oh, one more thing on notation. Um, to connect this back with our um, derivative at a point, if I want to find um, the derivative of a function evaluated at a, I'll write things like f prime of a or y prime of a. Or if I want to use this kind of notation here, I'll say something like the derivative of f with respect to x evaluated at x equals a. So this bar is an evaluation bar telling you what point you're looking at, what point you're plugging in. Or we can have dy dx, derivative of y with respect to x, evaluated at x equals a. So that's just some notation to keep in mind. Okay, so here's the example we want to look at. We want to use the limit definition of the derivative to find f prime of x, where f of x is equal to 5x squared minus 6x plus 1. So the limit definition of the derivative, whoops, 
I'm going to say f prime of x, start with my derivative notation, is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So that is our definition. So now I need to plug in um, x plus h into the function that I'm dealing with. So I've got 5 times x plus h squared minus 6 times x plus h plus 1 minus, and now this is where I have to be very careful and have those parentheses because I'm subtracting this whole function f of x. So that's 5x squared minus 6x plus 1, and I'm going to have to remember to distribute that negative sign across those parentheses. So here I'm going to need to expand this and try to get some cancellation of terms so that I can evaluate this limit. Because I see I can't plug in 0 yet because I'm going to have 0 in the denominator. So I've got 5 times x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus 6x minus 6h plus 1 minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 1. So I can already see some terms that we'll be able to cancel. But we'll just go ahead and finish expanding this. So we have 5x squared plus 10xh plus 5h squared minus 6x minus 6h plus 1 minus 5x squared plus 6x minus 1 all over h. So I see the minus 6x and the 6x cancels, the 1 and the minus 1. I also have 5x squared um, and negative 5x squared canceling. So I'm left with the limit as h goes to 0 of 10xh plus 5h squared minus 6h all over h. So I see I need to do some factoring in the next step. So I factor out that h, so I've got 10x plus 5h minus 6 all over h, so those h's cancel. So I've got the limit as h goes to 0 of 10x plus 5h minus 6. And now I see that I can replace h with 0 using direct substitution, so I'm left with 10x minus 6. So we just found, using this limit definition, that the derivative of f, um, f prime of x here is equal to 10x minus 6. Okay. So, like we said before, this we can think of this as a slope function. So, for each x that I plug into f prime, this function f prime of x is going to output the slope of the curve at x in the original function f. So we just want to take a look at um, these graphs of f and f prime and just comment on a couple of features. So here I've got my graph of f, f is in the red, and f prime here is in the blue. So remember, f prime is the slope function. For f, so for example, here, when f prime crosses the x-axis, that is um, telling us that um, at this corresponding x value on the graph of f, the slope of the tangent line would be 0. Okay, so f prime at that particular x value is 0, indicating the slope on the graph of f is 0. We also see that if I pick, pick a couple of points here, pick some value over here, that has a negative slope. And we see that down here, the value at that particular x value on f prime is also negative, lies below the x-axis. If I pick a point here, like 2, I see I've got a positive slope, and I see that that's going to correspond here to a positive value on the graph of f prime. So we're going to um, spend some more time working with this uh, definition of the derivative as a function, and um, talking about relationships between the graph of f and f prime. Please let me know if you have any questions.